Welcome to It's Your Date with Destiny with Apostle Vivian and Pastor Gemma Duncan of Divine Destiny Worship Center in Diego Martin. For the next 30 minutes, join us as we take you on a journey of maximizing your potential and realizing your goals through Jesus Christ. Why is it when you need a miracle, it doesn't happen, but when you least expect it, it happens? You are married. You have challenges in your relationship, but your spouse is unwilling to accede to any counseling. Is divorce an option? I'm no How does a parent handle a promiscuous child? A what are considered the do's and don'ts of a born-again so couple who is not yet married? There are always more questions than answers. That so here is Apostle Gemma. This is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. From the rising of the sun to the going down of the same, the name of the Lord shall be praised and it will be great. Truly God is making a statement in the Caribbean with his unique voices of nature. Earthquake, storms, storm surges, waves. He is certainly making a statement. I give God the praise today that we have been listening to what he's saying and we are submitting to him. Good morning on behalf of my wife, Apostle Gemma. I am on this program, Ask Pastor Gemma, that has become such a powerful voice for God to the people in the workspace, the people at home, the people who I need of a word from God that brings fresh assurance, and I dare say insurance, that those of us who put our trust in him will be like Mount Zion, will not be moved. Amen. So I welcome you to ask Pastor Gemma, the television arm of the ministry that accepts questions, receives and feels questions that people are afraid to ask. And many don't dare answer. But we give God praise because there is a grace upon Apostle Gemma to do just that. And uh, the accent on the program today will be giving you a better than even chance to get versed in, to get tutored in understanding the Bible. We have uh, an uh, education arm of the ministry, and part of it is this school of the Bible that has been going for the last three years. You need to be part of it. And you know what? Today we, we thought we will whet your appetite with sermonettes, five-minute sermonettes that were released by students who have received the tutoring and are just delivering the word of God with absolute authority and power. You will be blessed today. Call up someone and say, on, ask Pastor Jim on this television channel. Today, the word of God is being ministered by people who are students of school of the Bible. And the big question is, when will you sign up? 2018 season is coming. Be blessed as you view. Good evening to Apostle Emmanuel Vivian Duncan, to Apostle Gemma Duncan, our principal, where she is. We bless her. To the class of 2017, Lights of the Word. <laughs> to Covenanters here in Diego Martin, other Covenanters online and around the world. 
Dr. Guest, ladies and gentlemen, my name is Joanne Noel. I represent group number seven, Truth Seekers. Yeah. My topic tonight is the eye in the storm. Now, the eye of the storm is in the middle of the storm, that dot. And around the eye is always calm. But beyond that circle is the worst of the storm. Right outside of the eye is the worst. So when we would look at it, mommy would say, don't feel so happy, the eye now passed. I don't know how these old people knew these things. So get ready for the real storm. But in the eye of the storm, there's always calm and peace. My scripture is taken from the book of Acts, chapter 27, from verses 20 to 26. And I read, uh, if we can have it put up, that will be good too. From the King James Version, it says, And when neither sun nor star, stars in many days appeared, and no small tempest lay on us, all hope that we should be saved was then taken away. But long after long abstinence, Paul stood forth in the midst of them and said, Sirs, you should have hearkened unto me and not have loosed from Crete and to have gained this harm and loss. And now I exhort you to be of good cheer, for there shall be no loss of any man's life among you but of the ship. For there stood by me this night the angel of God, whose I am and whom I serve, saying, Fear not, Paul, thou must be brought before Caesar. And lo, God hath given thee all them that sail with thee. Wherefore, sirs, be of good cheer. For I believe, God, that it shall be even as it has been told to me. However, we must be cast upon a certain island. My topic this evening is really not that the eye in the storm, but it is rather, and if the multimedia would help me, we would see what my real topic is this evening. It is the eye, the eye in the storm, the eye, not the eye, but the eye in the storm. We look at Apostle Paul in the scripture that we just read, the journey he began to take is on his way to Rome. Yes, he's a political prisoner, and Luke tells us that the weather was bad. The winds were distressing and difficult to sail. And after some time, Paul spoke up. The eye in the storm speaks up. Paul perceived, and he said, he listened to his gut, and he told him, I perceive that we'll be lost, and I perceive that we'll have deaths. So he spoke up. So even if you're outnumbered, I'm saying to you, because he was, nobody listened to him. Wherever you are, even if you're outnumbered and they vote against you, you speak up. The eye in the midst of the storm, at your job, at your home, wherever, the eye speaks up. Yes? We went on even further and we saw further down that as the storm grew worse and they began to, began to lighten the load, they threw off a lot of stuff from the boat. They were in total darkness and losing hope. And the eye in the storm, which is Paul, then stood up. The eye stands up. And Paul stood up again, a prisoner he was, and encouraged them to take courage and be of good cheer. Paul didn't even tell them with vengeance, and they tell only not to come. How many of us would have said they tell only not to come? I see man of God, I know, little listen, take all you get. Paul still prayed. Even though he felt in his spirit, he perceived that all would be lost. He still prayed for them. So the eye in the storm stands up. The eye in the storm shows up. Because at one point, Paul actually broke bread and prayed in front of them. He was not ashamed because the Lord said, if you're ashamed of me, I will be ashamed of you before my father. So Paul stood up. The eye stands up. It shows up. And it allows God to show off because God stood over his word and he said to Paul, I will get you there. You will stand before Caesar. And in the midst of it, Paul was able to stand and show off on behalf of God. So I'm saying to us here this evening that even the centurion after a while, even the centurion started to say, I won't throw any of the men over or kill any because Paul needs to get there. So even Paul was able to convince his enemies through his acts of standing up that he was for God. I want to leave you this evening to remind you with a little verse of a song that says, I've come through 
many hard trials through temptation on every hand and though Satan tried to stop me and to place my feet on sinking sand through the tears and all of my sorrows through the fears and all of my pain the Lord was there to keep me cause he kept me in the midst of it all God will keep you in the storm Good evening, Apostles, Covenanters, family and friends, both online and in the congregation. My name is Charlene Manswell, and I represent Group 5, Soldiers of the Word. Excuse me. Thank you. This evening, my message is entitled, The Power of Forgiveness. And my foundational scripture is Ephesians 4.32, Be kind to one another, tender-hearted, forgiving one another even as God in Christ forgave you. According to the King James Version Bible Concordance, the word forgiveness means to excuse a fault, pardon, to let loose, release or let go. The word of God clearly highlights forgiveness as an essential practice that we as believers must adopt. Forgiveness comes from the heart and not merely the lips. And it represents the love and obedience of Christ in us towards him, his word, and towards others. The miraculous power of forgiveness was released into the world by the prayer Jesus spoke as he hung, wounded, and dying on the cross. Father, he said, forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing. That's Luke 23, 24. He knew and understood that those who were wounding and crucifying him were fulfilling God's master plan of salvation through forgiveness for all who would believe in him as the son of God. Jesus was the perfect living sacrifice who provided forgiveness for all sin. In emulating Christ, we too must forgive others who have caused us pain and hurt by their words and actions. Forgiveness is powerful. Firstly, it is a sign of obedience to God, which equals power. Philippians 2, 7 to 10. Secondly, forgiveness allows us to pray and worship freely in that there will be no hindrances and blockages. We would be free to enjoy God's presence. When we forgive others, even our enemies, as God has instructed, we are demonstrating the love of Christ in us towards them. The word of God states that God cannot forgive us if we can't forgive others. Let us exude the love of Christ. Forgiveness brings healing and there is a release that comes with it. We become free of the burden that unforgiveness places upon our lives we are liberated from the burdens of anger bitterness and resentment and in their place we are filled with joy peace and compassion for others not only our not only are our minds healed but our spirit and our bodies as well forgiveness opens heaven's doors to great blessings not merely for the forgiver but also for the generations to come Let's look at Joseph. Joseph did not consider even the tremendous cruelty done to him at the hands of his family. Too difficult, sorry, too difficult to forgive. It was those closest to him who hated him, his brothers. They did the unthinkable by stripping him of his favorite garment, casting him into a hole, and selling him as a slave. Despite being thrown into a prison, on false charges, when Joseph rose to be second in command to Pharaoh, he did not seek revenge. Instead, he forgave and embraced his brothers. He was blessed, and as Apostle mentioned earlier, in turn, he blessed them, just as we are to be. 
Tremendously, he blessed them with food, clothes, silver, and more. And in time, in that time, as we know, there was a famine. Not only did he bless his immediate family, but he promised to bless the next generation, their children as well. I'm sure that we can all agree, church, that at some point in our lives, sometimes those who are the closest to us have hurt and wronged us. Let us be like Joseph and forgive freely. Let us emulate Christ who continues to forgive us when we are when we are repentant, sorry, and truly live victorious lives. So I would like to conclude by just asking you to close your eyes for one brief second and let us just pray. Father, we thank you for your word and we thank you, Lord, that, Father, we have the power to forgive because of you, Jesus. We pray today that in our hearts we would repent before you and that, Father, we would release all of those who, Father, we may still not have forgiven. And with it, Lord, we declare your freedom in Jesus' name. Amen. Good night, everyone. Well, uh, good night to the online viewers, covenanters, apostles. And I want you all to know that the picture of your future is very bright. Amen. Tonight, tonight, we're going to be looking at connecting the dots. My title is built upon the scripture, Romans 8, 28. It says, and we know that all things work together for good to them that love God, to them who are called according to his purpose. Now the scripture says all things, all things encapsulate good, th good events as well as bad. But how can we learn from a bad thing that happens to us, something that a negative or a discomforting event that happens to us? Let's look at, I want you, I want you all to look, I want you to listen to first James, James chapter one, verse two. It says, consider it a sheer gift, friends, when tests and challenges come at you from all sides. This is from the message version. Knowing, you know that under pressure, your faith life is forced into the open and shows its true colors. So covenanters, don't discard your past happenings or your experiences. Nor should you readily presume that your future is going to end up like your future is going to be negative just as the past. Rather, focus your energies, focus your mindset on knowing that your times, which is what you have experienced now, and what God has in store for you is in God's hands. I want you all to know that as long as you are willing to go further in God, as long as you're willing to put your trust in him, your future is truly bright. Let, and a future in this case is like a dot. It's like a chart of dots. And the line that connects one to another is your decision to go forward because of an experience. If it's a good, if it's a good experience, you know, be, be quick to move on to the next level because it's going in our favor. But if it's negative, if it's negative, it could stop us. And I don't want you all to stop in spite of it. Because along with something negative, pain is associated with negative, fe with negative experiences. But we cannot stop in spite of that. Same, same James, James chapter 1 verse 4. It says, don't try to get out of anything prematurely. Let it do its work so you become mature and well developed not deficient in any way. If we get out of a situation because it's painful, we become premature. We won't be able to be the best that we can be. If we get out of our marriage because a hard time shows up, what does that speak about us? Think about it. We have to be there for the good times and the bad times. Know that there, know that there is something to learn don't discard what you have been through. There's something to learn. For, there's something for you, for you to, there's something within you that can only be brought out because of the negative times. And it is the funny thing is, I, I, I got inspiration to write this because I'm talking about my life here. I'm talking about what I have been through. 
I have been, Apostle Vivian prophesied to me four years, three years ago that I would one day become an engineer. And it was just an idea. And I honestly thought that, you know, it's just moving from point A to point B. But God bring me through a series of events, both pleasant and character building. And I, and I say character building instead of negative. And I had to learn that I, I needed to mature. Because if I don't progress, I would not be able to connect the dots to bring out the fullness of the picture I'm supposed to be living in. And because of my desire to go forward more in God, Apostle, I, have, I am seeing the vision being birthed as we speak right now. And I'm encouraging each and every one of you, don't stop. Don't stop connecting dot by dot by dot. You are in partnership with God. Don't stop until the picture is fulfilled. God bless you. Have you ever said to yourself, I really wish I can understand the Bible better? I want to communicate with God better. I want to be able to share my faith with others. Have you ever said, I'm reading the Bible, but I do not really understand it? Well, if you have ever said any of those things, I have really good news for you. My name is Gemma Duncan. My husband and I are Pastor Vivian Duncan are the pastors of Divine Destiny Worship Center. And we have what we call School of the Bible. We started since 2014 
And I'm going to give you a little rundown as to what School of the Bible is about and how we can facilitate you in fulfilling the needs that you have expressed. School of the Bible is a one-year course that runs from January to December. Every Tuesday from 7 p.m. to 9 p.m. And then we have four all-day quarterly sessions, one Saturday every three months. Inclusive in all of this, we have movies. Uh, our main course material is the Bible. The Bible is the one and only resource book that you have to have. There are other resource materials that we will have on offer that you could choose to get or not get. If you choose, then you have to order those materials. But other than that, there are seven manuals that we use. And these seven manuals, you'll be going to see them on the screen. I'll give you a little rundown as to what they are. The first manual, manual number one, is the Pentateuch, the first five books of the Bible. Manual number two contains the historical books from Joshua to Esther. Manual number three, the books of poetry from Job to Song of Solomon. Manual number four are the books of prophecy. And the books of prophecy, they are divided into two sections, major prophets from Isaiah to Daniel and the minor prophets from Hosea to Malachi. Now, when you come to the school, we'll talk about why they are considered major and minor. Uh, manual number five, the New Testament books now, the books of history, the four Gospels from Matthew to John. Manual number six are what we call the Pauline epistles. The epistles written by Apostle Paul from Romans to Philemon. And then manual number seven are the general epistles and they have a variety of authors and the book of Revelation. Uh, the one prophetic book in the New Testament. The manuals are simply written and user-friendly. They are easy to use and you can use them as a tool for study in the future. This program is designed to meet your need to simply understand the Bible better. The Bible is the only test, as I said. Other resources are optional and available on request. Ask for a brochure at 633-3780. And you'll see the number scrolling across the, the screen. The brochure will contain all the information that you may need. My name is Carolyn Supaya, and I attended School of Revival from Canada in 2015. My experience during that year of the program was amazing. I had one main goal in mind when I decided to do this Bible program, and it was to get a more comprehensive and holistic understanding of the Bible so that I can train my children accurately about God's will and what the Bible is all about. The highest benefits of attending School of the Bible was not just that I completed a Bible program, but also that I was able to take away so much information that I currently use in my own personal life, which has inspired me to govern myself daily in the things that I choose to pursue. Every time I read the material for class or prepared for my assignments or did an assessment, I could always point out interesting facts that I may have originally overlooked. The facilitators and materials that were made available are excellent tools for any individual to utilize within any ministry they are pursuing. I would highly recommend any person to consider the resources and training that this program provides. As I continue to grow in Christ, School of the Bible has provided me with the tools that I need in order to share the gospel, and I am extremely thankful for that. We are now open for registration for 2018. You can call us again at 633-3780. You can visit us at the church and uh, make inquiries, you're going to be given any information that you want or given a brochure. You can drop in even if you're not coming to a service. The office is open from 10 from Tuesday to Friday and uh, you will get the information that you uh, need. See you at School of the Bible 2018.